Uh, hello everyone, welcome to chapter 17. For this chapter there's only one um, exercise and I believe is 17b, um, but just a few words about irregular verbs. Um, and yeah, that's the only real, like re a little bit about regular verbs and then more about some ir irregular verbs. Um, the story itself is um, uh, basically like them deciding, the family deciding if, um, if it's permissible for the family of a wealthy Roman senator to stay at some poor lodging on the side of the Appian Way. Um, basically to stay at an inn. Um, so I think uh, Euclides uh, sees a, the inn up in the distance and they have a conversation about whether this is okay for them to do this and I think they end up having the, the decision to actually go because they can't just stay at the side of the road. But for the grammar, um, there is a chart here that you'll need to use for 17b. Um, uh, and I'll, let me just say a few words about irregular verbs here. I think I've said in the past, irregular verbs are verbs that change, as I say over here, change their forms more so than regular verbs do. And usually what that means is that the beginning or the first few letters maybe of the verb change and not just the endings, which always change with verbs as they sort of, as they, as they change persons and numbers. So the, if you look at, for example, dormire, which means to sleep, you look at how, I've put it all in blue here. Um, this is a very regular pattern here. You can see dormi, 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 dormi. It doesn't really change. I mean, it changes right here, but that's that's standard for regular verbs anyway to have like a vowel right there sometimes. But look at how uniform and unchanging it is, basically. Dormi all the way on, all the way down. And then there's just OST, mostis, and T for the endings, which always change. But look at this irregular verb, which I took from this chart over here, which is... Uh, Nolo nole, the infinitive is nole, and it means to not want. Um, look how much it changes. I mean, you've got nolo, and you've got non vis. I mean, there's two words in that verb. That's odd in itself. I mean, that's a total departure from a regular verb. So we've got situations where we've got two words right here and here and here. And then it's sometimes it's nol, and then sometimes the word non is thrown in. I mean, this, this verb ultimately comes from... Um, this non volo. Um, volo means to want and so this means I don't want and it got shortened over time to nolo but then sometimes it was left in because it's 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 hard to shorten non vis to something like I don't know nis just I suppose you know it's it's a question how these languages develop over time but for whatever reason th these uh, the non stayed in here right and uh, it didn't, it got swallowed up in these other forms here. So this is what makes for an irregular verb. Another example of an irregular verb, probably the most, you know, the biggest um, uh, irregular verb is this one here. Sum es est, sumus est is sunt, which is from the verb to be. Or the infinitive there is esse is to be. So you see again we start with an S here but we start with E's here then we go back to an S then we go to E then we go to S. So it has all of the usual endings. I mean first person singular usually has either an O or an M. So and then it's S, T, Mus, Tis, and T just as this one does here except for the M instead of an O. But, you know, the front part of the verb changes as well. So that's basically it. Now, is that always the case? Like ferre, which means to bring or to carry, uh, looks pretty regular, actually, if you think about it. But uh, it, there's other reasons why ferre is an irregular verb. It's, it's not as obvious right here. Um, but there is, say, like an I here instead of no I. Um, so it does, ferro, fer is fer, ferimus, not fermus, right? So it, it's a little bit irregular in present tense, but it's more irregular in its other tenses, which we don't even get to yet. But then look at eo, ere, which means to go. So you got eo, is, it. So we have an E and then an I and then an I, and then I, I, E. So as I say, the front part 
of the verb changes as well as the uh, the ending does. But if you look in there at the imperfect tense, they're really kind of more regular here. Now that I, th I think that for the most part that is true of all irregular verbs. The imperfect tense is really quite more regular. You see that there's not there's no changes here going all the way down. But in the present tense, for the most part, there can be quite a few changes for irregular verbs. So this is why we call them irregular. They don't really fit a standard pattern. And they can look quite unusual as you go from one form to the next, right? Um, so with that in mind, Let's have a look at 17b, which is right here. Now, all you're asked to do, again, for this chapter, you're getting off the hook a little bit because you're not asked to answer all these questions here. 17c, there's a ton of questions here, and there's also translating into Latin. So this is kind of a throwaway chapter. Um, and so that, in, <clears throat> in my opinion, it leaves sort of a gap in your knowledge because you don't have a chance to really practice these out. Um, but since 17b is what's been assigned, that's what I'm going to cover. So there's questions 1 through 12, each one worth 2 points, I believe. Um, so if you totally bomb it, you get 0 points. You get uh, 1 point for doing it okay, and then 2 points for mostly correct. Um, so uh, read aloud and translate. The reading aloud, I'll leave up to you, obviously. But you're basically translating these. And as I recall from last year, this was not a particularly hard ex exercise. So I'm just going to do two and keep the video kind of short here. Um, in fossam descendere nolo. No, nolo comes from this column here, nole, to not want. And then nolo, the ending of the O there, is first person singular. See, first singular and this obviously means I I something I don't want I don't want what now wanting or not wanting is often followed by an infinitive or here the infinitive comes before the verb but in English we would say it afterwards I don't want in descendere to go down to descend right and then in fossam into the ditch I'm not, I don't think I'm even going to write these down because they're these are fairly straightforward. So the point is to find that irregular verb. Make sure you understand what, who, what person and number the ending is, <clears throat> and then uh, translate properly. So let's do like just one more. Plaustrum onus fert. Fert comes from fere to bring or to carry. And then we have the wagon, and then we have a load or a burden or a weight of some kind. So plaustrum is the subject here. Onus is the direct object. Now, the only reason you know that is because it only makes sense for a wagon to bring a, a burden or a load and not a load to bring a wagon. Because plaustrum is neuter, so this could be nominative or accusative. And onus is a third declension neuter noun too, so this could also be nominative or accusative. So here you use common sense to say the wagon brings the load or the weight, the burden. And I think that's all I'll do for this week. Just want to study over these. I want to get used to seeing the forms of these irregular verbs and then properly translate sentences 1 through 12. Okay, good luck.